The acceptance of the use of cannabis is not desirable for the traditional pharmaceutical companies and its anti-drugs groups. There is a lot of money at stake and there is a lot of pressure from political and private organizations to stop the rise of cannabis. Patrick Kennedy, son of the late Senator Ted Kennedy, founded an advocacy group, Project SAM, Smart Approaches to Marijuana, which opposes the growing state and federal efforts to legalize pot. My guest tonight is a former congressman who now leads an anti-marijuana lobbying group. I'm for keeping it illegal, but I'm for alternative sentencing. Investigative journalist Lee Fang of The Nation found out that anti-cannabis lobbyists are financially supported by big pharmaceutical companies. Companies like Purdue Pharma, the manufacturer of oxycotin, the highly addictive painkiller and has been linked to thousands of overdose deaths nationwide. And also the firing of a University of Arizona faculty member, Suzanne Sicily, shows that the influence of anti-cannabis lobbyists is huge. Her firing halted the research of medical marijuana as a treatment for post-traumatic stress disorder. Incredibly hurtful because I've been stripped of all of my work without being given any reason why. It's very clear from the way that the university budgets panned out that U of A got the short end of the stick. Cicely says the battle is not over. She is asking the university to reinstate her. If she fails, she intends to try to get another university to take on the project. Jamaica, Uruguay, Colorado, Washington. More and more places are rebelling against the UN conventions that established the criminalization of narcotics half a century ago. But the latest organization to weigh in against the UN's line is rather surprising. It is a branch of the UN itself. A report just published by the World Health Organization, an agency of the United Nations, makes a discreet but clear call to decriminalize drugs. And not just cannabis. The report goes as far as recommending the decriminalization of injecting drugs, which implies the harder sort. The conclusions of the World Health Organization reinforce the conclusions of the UN declaration in Vienna earlier this year. The war on drugs of course has generated violence and suffering because of the violence. It makes me hopeful and definitely that you can see at least that things are changing and that's, that's definitely hopeful.